Yep. Okay, so an intercooler works basically like a large heat sink. Uh, the more surface area on a on a piece of metal, the cooler it is. So they're trying to get more surface area, which is the same idea with radiators, which is why you've got all these little fins in here, because it gives you the largest amount of surface area, so there's lots of metal surface area. That contacts the uh, air and gets whatever's the contents inside cooler. The air runs along, well, in this case the coolant, runs along these uh, channels right here. And for an intercooler, it's these channels right here is where the air is actually running through. And then this is for the surface area. This is a cheaper intercooler. It's kind of like an eBay intercooler. You can tell that the fins aren't spaced together very well, so it's not very efficient in that manner. And then also, you've got the size. The bigger it is, obviously, the more surface area you have. And then you've got the size of the inlet and the outlet, which is your restriction, depending on how much air you're actually pushing through it. So this one is, I believe, a precision. Yeah. You can see the fins are packed together much closer, and you've also got larger airways, so the air can flow through there a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And then the restriction on this side, this is a little bit bigger, this is a 2.75, but we're going to weld on two and a half inch pipes on the inside diameter of this, just going to weld on the outside. So it's still going to be the same pipes in this case anyway. But then you'll also notice the size difference plays a big role in the amount of surface area that's on it. You've got depth clearly. This one is a three and a half inch, while this one is just about a two and three quarter, or two and two quarter. No, two and one third. <laughs> so this one's a two and one third, and then this one's a three and a half. So we are upping it by almost an inch just in width, not to mention the amount more fins that there are. And then you've got the width of the core, which is right here. Then you've got the end tanks. The end tanks don't have any of the cooling material in it. So this is a 24 inch core, while this one is a 20.5 inch core. So basically what you're saying is I want to put the biggest intercooler I possibly can on my SRT4 Neon. Okay, so the bigger that it is, the more volume it has. It doesn't actually play that much of a difference into turbo spool. A lot of people will say that a bigger intercooler is going to cause you a lot of turbo lag, but the amount of air that your car is actually pushing with turbochargers is extremely fast, and you're only talking maybe a few milliseconds off of your turbo spool size. So yes, you could put a massive intercooler on, but it's not going to benefit you in the sense that it's going to be any colder the air going through it needs to be hotter in order for a bigger intercooler to actually play that much of a difference. So if the air coming into this is only, say, 120 degrees coming on one side and 80 degrees coming out the other side, I put 120 degrees in this, maybe it's coming out 60 degrees on the other side. It's only going to get so cold. So if you have a really big intercooler, it's still going to come out 60 degrees. It's not going to make a difference. You want a bigger intercooler if your air coming in is 140 or 160 degrees, which all depends on the size of the turbo and how much spool you're running and the efficiency range of the turbo. Okay, so what you're saying is, I want the biggest intercooler I can possibly get on my GTR. Yes. Yes. Okay. The essential difference between a race driver and someone who drives a car on the street is the race driver is always interested in extracting 100% of the utility out of the car. It's a harp, not a guitar. Oh.